Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video, and part two of Heroes Jubilee Blitz the 17th. Uh, we are going to be tackling the boss battles today, and honestly, it's, it's not bad, right? You can use one of two teams for a good score, one team for a really good score, and anything else for a score. So this is where I'm currently sitting. Uh, it is now 2.30 on Saturday, so a couple days into Jubilee. Um, my rankings are dropping as we talk <laughs> and as I sleep. So um, I can push out maybe a little bit more on boss 2 and boss 3. EX, it's not really worth it. Like When you're doing EX and you're trying to you know get the best run, you're literally gambling for 100 points. 200 points so most of the benefit is going to come from you know boss 2 boss 3 where the schemes are a lot higher like yeah yuki is at 98,000 and i'm sitting down here at 78,000. so we have plenty of room to grow in score but i have three teams space team is the medium team uh the light team if you can run it it's not great but again it'll get you a score you can also use a team with hakuro uh, but water is going to be your best bet because it ticks all the boxes for Dagrel. Because Dagrel, if you haven't paid attention or haven't attempted yet, uh, he does a number of things. One, he gives himself crit resistance, which, if you're using Hinata, you know, you've got crit damage and uh, Shion's going to give you, you know, the crit chance, but then you have that, right? So it's now 50% crit chance. Or, well, if yeah, it's no, it's not 50%, but you're just going to do a lot less damage on your crit itself. Uh, so it's important that you have a unit that can seal crit resistance, like Hinata. Her second skill, you know, the 5% alt buff, and seals crit resistance for two turns, which is important. Just like we had to use that on normal three, we will again have to use it here, because the kill turn is turn five, which is a big ask for a lot of people. Even myself, I've only gotten turn 5 kills like once, maybe twice. Everything else is turn 6, so that's why my scores could be a little better. Um, but <laughs> you can push to turn 7. The 7 is when he loses his crit resistance, so you know if you can't seal it for whatever reason or you're, you're not ready to nuke, you can push to turn 7. You will lose turn bonus, obviously. But at least you can do maximum overkill damage. Uh, so that's the important thing. Turn 5, still resistance. Turn 6, still resistance. Turn 7, you're good to go. Um, also, another unit that can seal crit resistance is Fire Millum. So while if you decide to swap her out for Shion, you're going to lose that water attack, but you will guarantee to get crit, because Millum's giving you crit, and also sealing is crit resistance, so your crit will do normal damage. Um, so those are the two. You can bring the hero, but, you know, you're lowering their crit resistance by 30%. He's doing 50, so, you, you know, math 20%, he's still going to have crit resistance, so you're still not going to hit as hard as you would want to. So Hinata and the water team, the very best option for this Jubilee, which is good because water is relatively new, very, very powerful. A lot of people should have summoned for those units there. That's a very, very competent team, even outside of Jubilee. Um, he also nerfs oranges, so you can't really use Hakuro. Like, six turns of orange nerfs. Like, I said you could use Hakuro, but I don't really think you should use Hakuro. You might be able to use the new guy. Um, you could use Gabiru. You could use a lot of the 2.0 teams, but water is going to be your best. He also buffs his attack and his pierce and crit rate, and then on turn, I think, six lowers your defense down here so that's the other thing with you know pushing past turn five is you're going to take a little bit more damage which is going to hurt your score but that is him he's weak to physical attacks which the water team is obviously not physical but it's still going to be the best team for you so let's go ahead and jump in with uh with the water team we'll just show it off first all right, so here is the water team that I am running right now. We've got Millum and Millum for, you know, water. Shuna, Shion, Dark Valentine, one for her trait and two for the ult stacking for maximum power. We've got Water Rimuru for the orb changing, and then Hinata is in the back as DPS. So I do have Valentine with a dupe now, so we can take advantage of her trait, which if you combine that with Shion's trait 
and then the full hand of blues that you start out with, you can get, again, a double protection meter turn two, which will help you begin stacking pretty effectively for this stage. Now this, we're gonna do EX to show off, you know, what you can do in EX stage here. This is not a perfect run though. This is a turn six run, not turn five. I sadly was just a few points shy of a turn five kill, but turn six, you can still do something decent, right? So turn one, we've got Shion and Valentine up front. We're gonna keep them there. So Shuna is the one that's gonna get swapped out. You could definitely put Rimuru up front first. It really doesn't matter. You're gonna use his orb change for green to blue. And then we're gonna bring in Hinata for the full hand. You know, start building up. Like I said, you'll get max prot uh, protection gauge after this turn stops because of the traits from Valentine and Shion. So six hand, six, 7,000 damage right there. Uh, the hand is meh, it's not great. I, you really can really get screwed over this hand by getting a lot of oranges uh, or a lot of greens that you just can't orb change out of because it's really necessary for you to get a lot of points right here on this turn to make sure that you can you know get some extra stacks and get a lot of points off these you know double boosted blues so here we are relatively okay we only have one Hanada orb which in the grand scheme of things isn't that great so we're gonna swap her out and then use Rimuru Steel, and then we're going to bring Shuna in for her orb change since it only costs 25, and then that'll give us another full hand of blues that are now double boosted by Milam. and so then next turn we can hopefully bring Hinata in for a unit that has a lot of orbs and not just one, and then, you know, start building her up as fast as possible. So, uh, the hand is... it's not... it's not great, but we can make use of it because we can just bring in Rimuru for Shion and then steal all those and then change the green. So we're going to use the steal first and then we're going to use the change here and then Valentine's first alt boost of three. It also heals your units, uh, one unit, which can help your score out. So it's it's a nice little cherry on top, right? So we got another stack of Milims. Now the, boost, the, uh, the blues are triple boosted. And we have, what, three Hinata orbs, which, you know, is better than one or zero, which I end up having uh, happen to me a lot today and yesterday. So I guarded that last hit. Not great. We took the alt. We have another stack of Milim. We are full on points, so we can definitely orb change and use another alt boost. We have a lot of Shuna orbs, which is actually kind of bad because a lot of these are oranges, right? Shuna changes two oranges. I would really love for her to change this Valentine. That way we can bring Rimuru in and steal the rest of Shuna, which we have happen. So thank the Lord. Now we have another stack of full blues. We only have one Hinata orb, but we can get a full hand of blues with another orb steal. We've also used Valentine's second stack of alt. So we are two of three done right there. We're gonna send Rimuru away that we can keep him in the back for more good orb steals potentially. This will get us max points and maximum protection gauge. We're on turn four, going into turn five. So if things worked out for you in a very good way, you could nuke here if you have everything necessary, which I unfortunately am just shy of. So I have 260 points. We still have to use the third stack of Valentine to get that boost. And then we would need to use the crit seal the alt boost, the magic boost, the crit buff, and Hinata's buff, which is a little bit more than the 195 that we're left with, unfortunately, right? 165, 170, 180. We would need 205 points right now, and we are 10 shy. So really, really unfortunate, but it's really important you get all that, especially the crit seal. Maybe I could have used the crit seal last turn. Um, that way it would still be in effect, and maybe I could have gotten you know full points still from those blues. In hindsight, probably a better thing for me to do, but we're going to go ahead and just do this. Now, here, what I should do is I should send everything, right? Because an unboosted Shion Alt's not going to do that much damage in the grand scheme of things. So I should just send this, which I do. And she does a whole whopping, like, 10,000? 15,000. So maybe I should have held on to that when we were fully boosted, because he still has a lot of health left, right? 
a lot of health left. So, maybe I should have held that. We probably could have fully boosted and sent the alt, and then sent Hinata's alt this turn, and we would have been fine. But also, now we're ready to go. So turn six, we have enough to use literally everything across the board, a lot, literally every skill that we have available to us on the front line. Magic boost, crit seal, um, uh, Hinata buff, crit, alt buff, everything. Another stack of Millen, just for good measure. We're on turn six, so we are one past what we would like to see. And then I'm not entirely sure how much health he has here since I'm currently blocking the screen. Uh, it's still a decent amount. So now I've got to determine how many orbs I want to send, but without killing him outright. Hinata's going to do decent damage, because she's, you know, fully, fully buffed by a bunch of Millum stacks and all the things available to her. 87% water, just by stacking, it's really, really good. So I end up thinking going with, like, two Hinata and a Shion, right? Oh, we go, okay, we do four. No, and I think I, I rethink that, which I should have sent. He had a lot of health left over still. So, there we go. So, one, two, three. Yeah, he. we could have sent another one. Probably could have sent Hanada last or something. But there we go. There's the nuke. And it ends us at a score of... 32-4, which I believe is still my current highest on EX. Because I haven't gone back and tried it again. So... That is EX boss against Daggerl using the water team. Let's move on to the second team that we can use. Alright, so here is the space team that we're going to use today. We've got Veldora and Cabby, Rimuru because he's still godly, Carrion for his crit buff and orb change, Shuna because it's Shuna, her orb change and, you know, alt buff, Hero for the rewind and crit buff, and then Milan for our DPS. So this team can get it done. However, unless you change out like Carrion or Hero for Fire Millum or something and sealing the crit resistance, your best tactic is going to be on, to nuke on turn 7 once his resistance goes away. Because there's no point in you using it, you know, early with the Hero, you're still going to have 20% crit resistance on the enemy. So it's still not going to work in your favor. Your best bet is to just wait it out, lose some turn bonus but you'll still get maximum power out of Millum. Um, but you could swap Fire Millum out for the hero. I mean, sealing crit resistance uh, early is better than, you know, just lowering their crit resistance when they still have some left over. So you could definitely do that. You'd lose the rewind, but it would allow you to nuke earlier if you uh, have the setup. So that is an option for you. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward, right? It's stacking with the water team, stacking with the space team. You get a little bit longer with this team. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this over to the run. Uh, this was a turn 7 kill, just so I can you know show, show everything to you guys. This is boss battle 3, so not EX, but 3. Um, just because I didn't want to try and take it on EX. I was running out of tickets, so I wanted to do what I could with what I had. Reamers on the front line for the orb change. We don't have Dark Bow. We don't have Shion to give us that double protection gauge turn two. So that will hold you back a little bit. And also the blues are not going to give you as many points. But every orb is going to give you extra skill points now. Which, you know, kind of goes hand in hand. So oranges will still be nerfed. But greens will give you a bunch. Blues will give you a good amount. And oranges won't give you jack. So turn two... Uh, let's see, what do we get? We have a stack of Veldora, so you know we can give that to Melum and the hero. We'll go ahead and just skip this animation. And then our hand looks actually not the greatest thing in the world. Like, if we use Rimuru to steal, uh, it'd be stealing one and one, of which we'd still need to do two other orb changes. So we're just going to do the one and rewind here to get as much protection gauge as possible. So hopefully next turn we can use Rimuru to swap in and get a full hand of blues, which I don't think works out. It does not work out, so. But we get another stack of Veldora, so these will give us more skill points on top of that, and I think we just send the greens here, because there's no real point. So there we go, send the greens, we get 58 skill points out of it, pretty good. We don't have to worry about needing points to stack um, Dark Val's alt, bu uh, alt buff 
Uh, you could bring her instead of Carrion, I guess. His uh, his crit buff will is will do less for you than that alt boost, but that is a lot of points that you're going to have to deal with. But if you're going to go till turn 7, you have two extra turns from the kill turn to build up those points to get three stacks of Valentines. So there are some variations with this team that you can do if you have the units to do it. But this is the like the traditional space team. So here we go. We've used Rimuru to change a few. Now we've got Carrion for his orb change. So we have three orb changers on the team, right? We have Shuna, Carrion, Rimuru, which is pretty good when, you know, we need blues to survive and to stack Beldora. So, and we can use another orange to blue for cheap. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We have no blues on this turn, so that's always fun. Moving on to turn four now, we can see that we almost have a hero alt, we don't have a milim alt, and we don't really have a good way to get any of that done. We could. We could steal the hero and then use Rimuru's orb change here, which might be what I do. Because uh, we don't need the hero's alt, it'd be nice to have another alt to lower his health maybe a bit on the nuke turn, but if we're going to turn seven, his health will probably be pretty low. So I think we'll be okay. So there we go, another full hand of blues. This will get Milam close. Very close, but not quite, but we still have two more turns to deal damage and stack up more Veldora power. So he's, you know, looking pretty good. We have no Milam orbs, so it goes very counterproductive to what I'm trying to do here, but we can at least give her a stack. And then we're going to send her away, because if she ain't going to get orbs here, there's a good chance she's not going to get orbs next turn either. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. We're going to leave Rimuru in for his steal, and then Carrion's orb change, and then we can swap the hero in. Oh, we leave Milim in like a dumb. Okay, well, I'm also not doing what I'm talking about, so play better than what I did. Praying that we actually get a Milim Orb next turn, because there have been a lot of times where I don't get a lot of Milim Orbs at all, or Hinata Orbs, to be fair. And we get one. <laughs> we get one Milim Orb. Great. So, we have a double stack of Veldora to swing in here. Uh, we have plenty of points, right? We haven't had to use any, so just sending these greens will get us Milim's alt. It'll get Carrion's alt, of which we don't care, because he's going to be super low that once we're fully boosted next turn we're not going to do anything. But now it's turn 7. You can see his crit resistance is flickering right now. So now when it switches over to turn 7, it now disappears, which means we are ready to nuke at full power, of which he has literally a nut tap of health left, so I cannot send anything else to get him any lower. So we're just going to fully boost crit, hero, space, uh, Drago. We'll bring Shuna in for her alt buff. And then we will go ahead and just send Milim and see how much damage we do. So, blop, and sending. There we go. And we do 184, so definitely not as much as uh, Hinata can do, and definitely, well, because, yeah, uh, for a lot of factors. 63-2 is quite a bit lower than my current score for boss 3, 73, so we're all like, like, like 10k above that. So, the space team can work if you don't have a good water team, but just know that it will not get you the top score. So that's the second team. Let's show off this third team, which is really... we're... we're reaching right now, alright? So hold on. I told you we're reaching, alright? Bride Shizu, Shion, Fire Milim for that crit seal, Light Rimuru, Leon, and Misery. So this is like the, I don't want to play Jubilee and I don't want to get sweaty. I have this team, let's get some points and then I can go back to my day doing whatever else besides being a sweaty tryhard. So this team is, you know, one of the best burst teams in the game. And regardless of what the devs like to say, I like this team much more than Space 2.0 ever is. So <laughs> I think this can put out a fair amount of damage in a short amount of time. And Daggerl doesn't give himself any pierce resistance, it's only crit resistance. So our pierce skills are going to come in pretty handy against him. It's just that, you know, we don't have four, five, six stacks of Veldora or Milim to really boost our light damage up that high. We've got Leon for light damage, 
Misery for her boosts, uh, Rimuru for his trait and his pierce resistance and his orb changing. Milam has a single green to blue orb change, so we can actually take advantage of that turn one and get a five hand of blue, which, you know, it does work. And then Shion obviously is our nuker. So we've got Romarus attached to Shizu for the trait for the extra 6% attack if we're above, I think, 75% HP, which uh, we can be at if we kill early. So this run doesn't take very long. It's like four minutes or something. So we can get this done very, very quickly. So turn one, we've got Shion up front to take advantage of her trait and Reimu for his trait. We've got Milim up here as well, who can change one of those blues. Hopefully we change the Shion orb, and we don't. So, eh. It is what it is. It probably works out better for us this way. So we have two guaranteed green Shions next turn. So, this is boss three. If I didn't say that already. This is boss battle three. So now, what we're going to do... We've already used one skill, so that's one stack. We're going to bring Misery in for Milim. Milim's not really useful here until we can use the crit seal. So let's go ahead and use the green buff, and then we will use Shizu. We're going to get another one after this full send of six, so there's no real um, downside to using it except doing more damage. So here, greens are boosted for two turns now, so we don't have to worry about using much for at least another turn. Max skills, another Shizu meter, and we'll do fair damage. We can bring Leon in right here for Misery. Uh, we don't really need her skills anymore. We could use the heal, I guess, for another stack of Pierce Power if you really wanted to. We're going to have max points, so maybe I should have, but it's not, you know, terribly important. So here we go. Leon also doesn't have the Pierce, so, eh, whatever. Xion does 11,500, okay. We've got her ult, which is good. Um, we don't have to worry about that anymore. We're going to go ahead and use the Leon Light buff here. And then the Rimuru Pierce Resistance down. And I think that's about it. No, okay, I use everything here. So the greens are still technically boosted, right, from Misery. But I this is turn three. So we need to use a bunch of skills right here, of which we do. We now have zero points. So we've maxed out uh, what we can get as far as Pierce Power is concerned. We are, I think it's 105% Pierce rate from Shizu now. 100%. All right, so we're guaranteed to Pierce here now. Uh, we've sent Shion away with the light buff, that way we can hold on to that for our next turn, which is where we're going to kill, I think. Uh, maybe we go to turn 5, maybe we don't, kind of depends, but here we go. Rimuru, 16 and a half, uh, give or take, that's pretty good. So turn 3, we've got a Milim ult, we've got a Rimuru ult, and then we have a Shion ult in the back, we've got 100 points, so we can use everything here. Go ahead and bring Shion back in for Leon. He serves no purpose anymore. We've already used his buff. And now we can use the crit buff and the crit seal in the same skill on Dagrel. And then use Shion's power. And we've already used the Pierce Resistance uh, skill from Rimuru, so we don't need to use that again. We'll go ahead and do Shizu. And now we have guaranteed Pierce. Pierce power, attack, crit, light buff. Um, the Pierce Resistance is on there. So now we just need to determine what I want to send, right? Because we have three alts and we have we have a full six card send. Will he live two alts, three greens, and then Shion? Probably not. Probably not. I don't even think I send an alt here besides Shion. I think I just send the three greens, which may have been a mistake um, after we, you know, watch this replay. But turn four kill, I mean, if you don't want to do this for a very long time, it can get you a score and then you can get out of here. So, yeah, it looks like I just send the three greens, which is a terrible mistake. I should have sent another alt, maybe like Milim or something. But here, Shion does like 90-something. Yeah, 91 and a half. So definitely not the highest score in the world. But we end with 54-8. So really dropping off there. But if you don't have a water team, if you don't have a space team, but you have light 2.0, you can use this. And you don't have the hero either. Or Hakuro, right? So we've taken out a bunch of the big contenders that are normally present in Jubilee, and we have replaced them with a good team that's not really built for this stage.
but can still give you some points. So there are the three teams that you can use that I used for Jubilee, um, Light, Water, Space. Let me know in the comments what other teams you guys used to score in the stage. Did you get higher with a different team that I didn't show off that maybe can get people higher? Let me know in the comments, but that's it for me, guys. Take it easy, and I'll see you later.